So this is the uh, next position. Lead is up by seven pips. No double take, could you hands up? No double take. One, two, three, four. How about double take? Mm-hmm. Double pass. Mm-hmm. Well, for me, if it occurs a thousand times, I get it a thousand times correct. Just because I knew the answer. So I, I remember many, many reference positions. This is my favorite, rem uh, favorite re reference position. This is exactly borderline of double take and double pass. So the equity of this position is like 1.000. 1, 1. 0, 0, 0. So you can, you can drop or you can pass. It's, it's a, you, can, you can take or you can drop. It's, a, it's the same. It's the same. It's exactly borderline position. Take or pass, it's just a flip a coin. So if you remember this position, if you knew this position, of course you can answer this is a double take because five point is stronger than seven point. So this is good for white, right? The previous position was simply a double take, uh, the borderline, borderline position. So now th this is for sure this is a double take position. So try to remember reference position as much as you can. And uh, good reference position should be easy to remember or frequently happen or borderline decision. At least two of them is needed, I think. Otherwise, you know, our brain capacity is limited. You know, we have something to do, you know. We sh shouldn't use all our brain and energy for that game. So just try to create good reference position and minimize your work. This position is a very good example, actually. Easy to remember. It's almost twins, right? This shaker is here, then it's completely twins. So it's easy to remember, and it's actually frequently happen one man back against no man back. And uh, it's exactly borderline. It's exactly borderline take or pass. So if you remember this position, you can remember hundreds of positions. You can answer hundreds of positions of, 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 the, of, of this kind. Mm. I'm going to show you another example to show you how good the difference position is. This is actually happening from yesterday match against me, me against uh, Ventra. Ventra. I was playing for the Gammon. I was playing on the Gammon, for the Gammon. And I left the shot, and uh, white enter with four. And red is on low. Red is reading three, and white, red is reading three, one, to 17 points. I might be wrong. I might be wrong, but for most people, you guys no clue about this position, basically, I believe. Because this is, <laughs> this is unusual, right? This is unusual. But I remember one reference position, so that this position is like my friend. Seven checkers here, and seven checkers here, and one here. This is borderline. So I remember this position as a reference position because it's easy to remember. Seven checkers here and seven checkers here. Seven, seven, and one on the bar. And the white structure is just as the starting position. So if you knew this position, you could have a good idea of this position as well. Because now, uh, lead has only five checkers. However, lead has three-point board. So I, I, I thought it's a good trade-off, right? I have only five checkers off, but I have good three-point ball. A computer said it's actually a double pass, but, but this small, but this small. And without reference position, you have no idea. You, have, you can't figure out this over the ball. So this is the power of reference position. If you guys remember this position, you are instantly improved from, from now. This is the final position. Again, from my game. Um, some of us might remember this position. This is happened in 2009 World Championship in the final. Me against uh, Lars Robert. 
I, I still remember one of my friends commentating this position as a pass. <laughs> he actually shouted. <laughs> well, um, I don't want to explain, you know, this position in a positional way uh, because this is not my point. My point is I saw this position is a double take. However, uh, you can imagine that this is the final of the world championship and we are playing like five hours. And in the end, finally, we get to the close to the end and I'm still leading 20 to 20. And this position is very, very scary. You could get gammon very easily. He could with, hit with two, cover with seven, cover with 11, and 10 is also a good shot. So it's very, very scary. And, uh, but you have to take it. Backgammon is a gamble. You can't control the game, actually. When I started the game, I thought I can control this game. I thought I can win by, you know, I don't need to take a risk. I could collect a point one by one, and in that I should be favorite. But I, I was totally wrong. Backgammon is uncontrollable. You have to be ready for die. You have to be ready for gamble. You have to show your courage to be a winner. Of course, you, you, you might lose, of course. But uh, you have to die with your decision, not be scared. This position, um, of course, you, you might get hit. You might keep dancing, and eventually you get gammon. Uh, however, if it's a take, you have to show your courage. You have to prove that you are ready to gamble, OK? And if you're wrong, you're just wrong. But uh, the important point is you should stick to yourself. You shouldn't be scared. And uh, this is uh, related to the tip number two. You have to be very aggressive with doubling cube. Once again, doubling cube is a weapon. You have to use it. You have to be a uh, friend with doubling cube. You shouldn't put in, in the center cube, and you, know, and you shouldn't be scared. Um, yes, uh, this is my conclusion of uh, doubling cube seminar. <laughs>